Well, it is turkey break, which is a perfect time to brush up on a little bit of our mathematics for the URL competition. When I say turkey break, again, I do mean it's Thanksgiving break, November 2012, and it is Tuesday right now. Currently, I'm, I'm a bit bored. I'd rather do some math than do nothing, so I'm creating a series of videos that are going to go through these uh, UIL math problems. I'm really going to go through this entire test, the Mathematics Released UIL from the, um, the Student Activities Conference 2011. If you are currently a UIL student, this is great review and you should definitely brush up on all these uh, concepts and watch these videos. And if you are not a UIL student, and if you're kind of interested, myself and Mr. Ripito coach the competitive mathematics team, and so come see us. I like to make the videos. I've gotten pretty good at it, I like to think. One of my favorite words recently has been annotated by Mr. Del Pena. And again, if you'd like some more information about competitive mathematics, come and see me in uh, room E205 here at Brennan High School. Mr. Ripito resides in room E206. He's also a UIL coach. So this one is Ripito. All right. So, success in the UIL mathematics competition is more than just problem solving. Problem solving is a big part of it, but they also throw in some things like things from history. Mathematicians is a very important one, um, and then they do types of numbers, which they like to to know. Uh, it's given us a list of these, so we can basically you know write them all down and study. Um, I would, if I were a UIL student, um probably do a print screen of this right now. I will tell you right off the bat, I know I have a working knowledge I'm familiar with all the following mathematicians that I'm going to highlight here. So Archimedes, I think he was ancient Greek. Don't quote me on any of this, by the way. George Boole basically formalized uh, logic and what we now call Boolean algebra to describe uh, mainly things in computer science. And speaking of computer science, uh, Ada Lovelace, who's the uh, Countess Lovelace, is actually considered the first computer programmer, as far as I know. This was back in the late 19th century. George Cantor is very known, very well known for uh, set theory. Uh, Rene Descartes, very popular mathematician and philosopher. Uh, the Cartesian coordinate plane of X and Y is named after him. The advantages of the last of an algebra, I don't know too much about him. Uh, I don't really even know how to pronounce his name, Aristophanes, but I know he has a C named after him that's basically an algorithm for finding prime numbers. Um, Euclid is the father of geometry, wrote the elements back in ancient Greece. Everything that we now know about geometry is almost all that came from Euclid. He's the father of geometry. Uh, Leonard Euler did more and more things than I can ever name. Um, I know Christian Bull Goldbach has a conjecture about prime numbers. I'm not really too sure about him. Hypatia I've heard of. Uh, don't know who that is. Uh, and this is also an interesting name to pronounce. I think it's Leibniz or Leibniz, something like that. Anyway, he was he actually developed calculus um, at the same time era that Isaac Newton was developing calculus, but they worked independently of one another, which is very interesting. They use a lot of different notations. I believe that most of the modern notations that we use for calculus actually did come from uh, Leibniz. Uh, Mandelbrot, I believe, was one of the founders of a fractal theory. John Napier developed uh, logarithms. Don't know, don't know too much. John Venn, the only thing I know about is Venn diagrams, which describe set theory. Okay. Uh, in contrast to that, let me go ahead and I, really, I know most of these numbers, and I've actually given out some handouts describing the difference between you know, a real number, an integer, a complex number, a rational number. Um, I think most of us already know, you know, even and odd, prime, composite. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to highlight the stuff that I don't know. Um, 
I don't know what a frugal number is. I don't know what an economical number is. I do not know extravagant, unhappy, polite, wasteful, lucky, unlucky, primeval, I guess, evil, odious, I'm supposing, not quite sure what a happy number is. Every single other one of those I could tell you at least a little something about. Uh, I know the perfect, abundant, and deficient has to do with the sum of the proper factors and not exactly certain which one is deficient and which one is abundant, but I can always look that up. So here we are. We have things that we can look up now without even doing any math, just research. They will always put some sort of knowledge, almost game show type question just about, you know, and they'll say, what did uh, Archimedes contribute to math? What did George Bull do? What did Rene Descartes? What they're really interested in is their contribution toward the field of mathematics. For example, John Napier uh, basically came up with the idea of a logarithm as we know it today. We're not really interested in their personal lives per se. We're interested in their contributions toward the field of mathematics. All right, well, this is a competition. We are a team, and I am a coach. So let's talk strategy for a moment. On the math test, just wanted to remind everyone that there are 60 problems. You get 40 minutes. So that really is less than one minute per problem. Of course, no one's really expecting you to complete every single problem. As far as scoring goes, you do get plus six for correct. You get deducted points for incorrect. So if you miss a problem, if you put the wrong answer, you will get minus two points. But if you leave something blank, you do get plus or minus zero, which leads to the direct conclusion that you don't need to solve any of these problems in any particular order. There's really the strategy is to, to know which problems to do in which order. Um, know how to use your graphing calculator. We provide them most of the time we go to the meets, but practicing at home, which you really should be doing, um, you should have access to a graphing calculator. Make sure that you're very comfortable with how to use it. We want to be competitive. We want triple digit scores. That means 17 questions all answered correctly. Well, of course, if you were to go for like 25 questions and you missed a couple, you may still get that triple digit score. Triple digit scores are very competitive. That's where we want to be. Uh, down here, general test taking strategies. This actually applies to many different tests, uh, you know, SAT, ACT, things like that. Every problem can be solved in more than one way. That's true for every math problem, except the ones about mathematicians or about theorems or about history. Those are kind of knowledge-based questions. Do you know your graphing calculator techniques. Remember that you, there's multiple choice. You can work backwards in certain problems. You can work backwards from the answer choices. Uh, if I did do the math on it, and if you can eliminate two answer choices, taking a guess, theoretically using the expected value, um, taking a guess would be a good idea. You would likely gain points rather than lose points if you can eliminate two answer choices. If you can only eliminate one, you're still kind of in the negative as far as probability goes. So you don't want to guess. Um, make sure you are going quickly. Be time conscious. Go through this entire test. Solve the easy ones first and then go back to a more complicated problem. If a problem is really wordy and it's a word problem and you're, that's maybe not your strength, then just skip it all together. If you have time, get back to it later. All this is about is accuracy and speed. We need the perfect combination of accuracy and speed.